settled and learned to trust us, we witnessed some dramatic changes in her behaviour. So much so that our motivation to foster had grown even stronger. But the traumatic start had left Jamie chary of new arrivals. No, I doubt it, I said, though my words sounded hollow. I actually had no idea what Zadie Hassan would be on. In a hurried telephone conversation with her social worker late that afternoon, I had been told that the 13-year-old was from a Muslim family who had never come to the attention of social services before, and so information was sketchy. Of Asian heritage, Zadie had been found by two patrolling police officers early that morning, sheltering in a shop doorway in a central northern shopping centre. Apparently, she had pleaded with officers not to take her home, begging as if her life depended on it. She'd seemed so genuinely terrified that the officers took her straight to the police station and alerted social services. At 13, Zadie was outside of our approved age range, but she had spent most of the day waiting at the local authority offices, listening as social workers phoned agency after agency, trying to match her with Muslim foster carers. By the time the decision was reached to settle her with a white British family, it was almost 5pm, and the poor girl was exhausted. Strictly speaking, our family was only approved to take children from 0 to 11, leaving a gap of at least two years between any child coming into our home and my own youngest, Jamie, who was just 13. But when an ideal match isn't possible, and a child urgently needs a warm bed to sleep in, social workers are usually prepared to bend the rules. A gap of two years is recommended between looked after and birth children, so that the family dynamics are roughly unchanged. If disrupted, resentment against the foster child can build to a point where the placement breaks down. Some foster children have been so badly abused in their own homes that they find it difficult to witness the positive environment when they arrive in a foster home and seek to sabotage the relationship between family members, so it's important to maintain the original pecking order. Preparing children for family life when they have had little experience of boundaries or parental discipline takes time and patience. Even getting them to sit at the table at mealtimes can seem like an insurmountable task in the beginning. I wondered whether we would experience any behavioural issues with Zadie. If so, we'd have to brace ourselves to get through the first few weeks while she adjusted to our house rules and boundaries. I had cared for teenagers before and emerged unscathed, so I wasn't too worried about Zadie's age. What concerned me more was her culture. Would she feel comfortable living with people who didn't share her faith? I wondered. My own parents were Christian, and having grown up in a house where one adult was more devout than the other, I had witnessed firsthand the problems that differing religious views can cause. My father was so determined to prevent any of his children drifting away from the church that he would only allow us to meet the families who shared his faith. Such a sheltered existence left me wary of outsiders when I was at this age. It took years for me to realise that people didn't necessarily need to be religious to have a good heart. I wondered whether Zadie might feel as guarded as I had. If so, she might well feel awkward around us. Frightened, even. Armed with clean linen and towels, I went through to make up Zadie's bed. It was almost 6pm, but the bright early May sunshine was still streaming through the window giving the magnolia walls a cheery glow. I was pleased Zadie would have the room in our house that got the most sun during the day. She needed to recover from the night spent sleeping outside. I wondered whether there was anything about the place that Zadie's parents might disapprove of, certain that they would have concerns about her staying in an environment so far removed from her own. The last thing I wanted was for Zadie to feel uncomfortable in what was to be her home. My sixteen-year-old daughter Emily, still dressed in her school uniform, was already bustling around the room with accessories she thought Zadie might like. As if reading my thoughts, she plucked a book from the shelf beside the bed and handed it to me. It was a children's illustrated Bible. I don't think she'll be needing that, Mum, she said. No, you're right, I said, grimacing. Help me scout around and see if there's anything else we should move, would you, Ems? Emily nodded, kneeling in front of the bookshelf and running her index finger along the spines. There's a Muslim girl in my class, Mum. Aisha. She has, like, a special room to go and pray in. She's never allowed to skip prayers, and she sometimes has to miss lessons to do it. Muslims have to wash their feet and everything before they pray. And they're not allowed to fart, Jamie piped up from his bedroom. Or they have to start all over again. Emily rolled her eyes. He's so gross, Mum.